Well, every 10 years, all across the country, the work begins to redraw legislative districts. They use the data obtained from the census to see how populations have shifted. It can impact a community for a decade. And here to explain why it's important to play a role in all of this, Dr. Juan Andrade with the United States Hispanic Leadership Institute. You may know it as USHLI. Always so nice to see you, sir. How are you? Fine, thank you. It's good to see you, and it's good, great to be back with you. Okay, uh, this is a good topic to discuss, especially right now. I know that every 10 years we seem to be having this discussion where we try to understand how the, the role that the census plays, first of all, and then also redistricting and how that is laid out. So I'll let you kind of give us the 30 second explainer on how that works. I'll give it my best shot. <laughs> well, you know, it took uh, several years to gear up for the 2020 census. And then it was conducted uh, just over a matter of months. And there was a little extension, but we got as many people counted as we possibly could in the time allowed. And it's extremely important because the census serves two primary purposes. One is the sole basis for the allocation of money, and it's the sole basis for the allocation of political power. And that's what the census is all about in short. And. Uh, we did, we did as well as we possibly could under the circumstances. Uh, we've never done it in, at the same time that we're under a pandemic that, uh, that just running rampant across the country. But uh, we got through it and uh, as best we could. And I think we're going to have some good numbers to show for it, which will carry us in through uh, up until the 2030 census. Oh, that's very good. Very good. Okay, so coming off of the census, we now move into redistricting and how that will work. Talk to me about the role that the USHLI plays in making sure that that's done accurately and correctly, because as I read through some of the history, there have been a number of lawsuits in the past over this whole issue of redistricting. Yes, uh, especially in the Chicago area and Illinois. Uh, lawsuits have had to be filed against the city and against the state, trying to level the playing field where people can uh, be empowered sufficiently and, and legally, correctly, properly, to where they can do one thing, and that is to elect candidates of their choice. And uh, a lot of times that involves lit litigation because sometimes uh, lines are drawn, boundaries are drawn in such a way that uh, is diluted. It dilutes people or a community's uh, power. And that's what we tried to prevent through redistricting. And, and uh, USHLI has been involved uh, with the redistricting process, especially here in Illinois, since, uh, since the 1980 census, uh, 40 years ago. And, uh, and that started with just one automatic district, and then it just continued to increase every decade. Uh, to where now we have a good number, not enough, but a much better number of uh, Latino aldermen uh, serving in Chicago City Council. And we had none in the legislature, and now we have a caucus. Uh, and, and that, you know, with women in the Senate and, and men and women as well in the House. Uh, and what's good about it is that this has spilled over beyond Chicago and Cook County to where. Uh, the color counties have also empowered themselves as well and created districts themselves, uh, benefiting from the same uh, uh, pursuits uh, that were taken, initiated here in Chicago and Illinois. And of course, this takes place all over the country. Yeah. Uh, this is how we have gone up to where now we used to have like uh, less than 10 members of Congress, and today we have over 40. Latino members of Congress. And this is all a result of redistricting, where people have been able to elect candidates of their choice and in a predominantly Latino community that oftentimes is a Latino candidate, male and female. Yeah, but given the fact that we had so many issues this year with the census where people had this, uh, they just weren't trusting the process, right? And the questions that perhaps were gonna be on that census questionnaire, are you worried that um, that may lead to a loss in representation in places like Chicago or places like, for example, Aurora, where a lot of Latinos are moving to just in the last few years? That's true, absolutely true. And uh, there were a couple of uh, attempted setbacks, near setbacks in the course of the census. First, it was uh, to exclude uh, undocumented workers, uh, immigrants, uh, 
uh, from the census itself, and or by asking the question, are you a citizen? And by asking that question, of course, people who were not a citizen were reluctant to participate in the census. And that spread so much intimidation around the country that even though that uh, proposal was re reversed, right. it was too late. It's like trying to put, uh, you know, a toothpaste back in the tube. Once it gets out there, you're not going to get it back. And so once that word got out to the community that that was going to happen, that you had to say whether or not you're a citizen, well, that scared enough people away to where it took an extra effort to convince them that, no, the question is not going to be there. And so there was an all-out campaign, a full court press to educate people and let them know, let everybody know that this question about are you a citizen or not was not going to be on the census. So, but so we 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 got we were able to recover as many people as we possibly could. But certainly, some were uh, did not trust the distrust of government and filling out government forms and, and telling giving any kind of information to the government. Government is just still something that there's so much distrust out there. But still, we had to overcome that. But that was a big challenge to us. Oh. And then now, later, after we were successful at doing that to a large extent, getting people to accept the census and be counted, then the administration, the uh, past administration, came out with, uh, OK, well, and before we provide that information, the census information to the state for the purposes of what they call reapportionment, which is essentially the same thing as redistricting. Right that we're going to exclude undocumented immigrants. And of course, that would have uh, excluded millions and millions of us. All right. And, um, and so, it, but it came back to where now the, the courts rule that no, you can't do that. And President Biden reversed that order. And here we are uh, today. Yeah, here we are today. That, uh, I yes, know that I we have to get going here in about 15 seconds, but I don't want to leave you without mentioning the conference that's coming up for USHLI. So give us a, a brief kind of 15 second explainer on it. Well, it's going to be one of a kind. It's, <laughs> a, it's, been, it's a virtual conference just being done uh, through screen, uh, but we've got a great program focusing on education, empowering women of color for social change, on education and COVID-19, covering in Latinas, especially focusing on their empowerment and getting their voices out there. And, uh, it, and we're just trying to reach as many people as we possibly yeah. can. Uh, in person, we could get 6,000 together. We're hoping to get many more than that uh, remotely. Okay, and the Thank website, you very much for the website is ushli.org. I wish you the best of luck, and I'm excited to see what you can do this year with the virtual conference, okay? We'll talk to yes, you soon. Thank you.